Hey guys, now that I'm done with this series that nobody cares about for now, we can focus on some videos that might be more important to your average player. And the first video I have for you here is a UR rerolling tier list. Rerolling is a concept in gacha games where you make new accounts over and over again so that you can get some good cards right off the bat because having good cards in an RPG type of game is very important. Once again, All Stars is not a rhythm game. Make sure you can actually team build properly, learn the mechanics of the game, and play it as if it were an RPG. That being said, this tier list will be my opinion on what cards are good and what cards are bad. I've played the game since its launch in September. I know the mechanics, so I think I'm a good judge for whether or not a card is good or not. Since it is a tier list, it is of course opinion based. I think you can trust my opinion since I did do the entire series of beating the game without using gacha cards. I have that to at least prove my credentials. So we're going to be taking a look at all 18 of the URs available at the beginning, and I'll be placing them into five tiers, S, A, B, C, D, S, S is the best and then D is the worst. Reasons for putting a card in a high tier or a low tier will pretty much break down to three categories. Number one, their stats. A card has three different types of stats, appeal, stamina, and technique. Having a good distribution of stats will definitely warrant a card high up in the tier. Number two are their skills. They have three different types of skills. One, I'm going to call the ability, which activates during a song. And then there are two types of personality skills. One of them will be passive and one of them will be active type. Passive personality skills give percentage boosts. There are various parameters for which cards are eligible for that particular card's boosts. The active type of personality skill also acts like an ability, has certain activation requirements, and do a whole bunch of different things. And then the last parameter for determining whether a card is good or not will be their typing. The game has four types of cards. That's what's indicated on the bottom left here, the VO, GD, SK, and SP. The thing on the top right is the attribute of the card. That is not as significant since attribute matching only applies for song matching, whereas the type matching is much more important for overall team building. Now for a quick explanation of the five different placements, S tier cards are the best card to do a particular job or they do some kind of unique job. There are very few S tier cards for that reason because most of the good cards will be in A and B tier since they kind of lack that unique or overpowered spice that S tier cards have. A tier cards I would consider almost perfect. They're lacking like one thing from being S tier but aside from that one thing they're pretty much equivalent to an S tier card so having A tier cards is definitely nothing to laugh at. B tier cards are the borderline between good and bad. If a card is in B tier it's still good. A tier cards are better and S tier cards a lot better. Having a B tier card is good but you can always do better. C tier cards just don't provide much they do maybe one thing that's okay and then everything else is not that good and then d tier is just unless you actually like the girl or you like the art of the card there are a lot better choices that you could be going for when re-rolling so i would highly advise against getting b and d tier cards unless they just happen to be your favorite but even then you would try to re-roll for an account that has your favorite as well as another card from one of the higher tiers finally if you're watching this in the future and there are more cards added into the game this list will be outdated but you are free to check out my other videos on my channel where I will be constantly uploading gacha reviews of new cards that come out into the game and I'll be placing them into their respective spots into the tier list. Go search up the latest video if you're watching this from the future and it would have an updated list compared to what we have here. Let's actually move on to the placements of the girls on the tier list. We'll be going in order and we're going to be starting off with the leader Honoka. Now unfortunately for Honoka, it's only good enough for C tier. Let's take a quick look at what Honoka can provide for a team and why she got into C tier. For all these card stats, I will be referencing the Catch Again website. You can check it out yourself if you want to see these stats as well as other things for all stars. It's a very good resource that I would recommend checking out. For Honoka, her ability, which is listed as skill here, but I'm going to refer to it as ability since I think that's what it's called in the global version. Her ability is damage reduction. Damage reduction is the worst out of the three defensive skills. Shielding and healing are much better defensive skills. Damage reduction is just the worst of them, so that's why Honoka isn't that good. On the individuality section, which I'm gonna call personality, but I don't know what it's actually called in the global version, but I'm gonna call it personality since it's easier to say. The passive personality skill increases stamina for all of the team members, which is pretty good, and the active personality skill is also a stamina increase skill. Honoka is a good defensive typing card, but there are much better defensive typing cards you could be aiming for. For that reason, that's why she's in C tier. Next off, we have Ellie. Like I was saying, there are much better defensive typing cards. Ellie is 
one of the best, gets an A tier for that. Let's take a look at her stats. Now, although Ellie has very low stamina, she also has very high appeal. This is what we call an offensive defense card, if that makes sense. It's a card that can provide you with defensive benefits while also having a good stat line for getting high scores. If you're trying to get a high score, you'll really want to look for these offensive defense cards. They'll let you go very hard on the offense while not worrying about the defense too much because they can take care of that for the entire team. Ellie's ability is stamina recovery and her passive personality skill is also a stamina increase, double defenses for the skills, and then the active is rather unique. It's a noob skill but it might be useful for a new player. Later on down the road it's practically useless. You can revive if you die during the song. It's of course only a chance of revival which is determined at the beginning of the song but if you do happen to die when the skill activates at the beginning then you're revived. So that's a unique skill that again isn't too useful when you get good at the game but could be useful for a new player. Next off is Katori gets a B tier. B tier cards, again, aren't bad in any sense, but there are better cards that you could be going for. And let's take a look at why Katori is B tier. Her stat line is rather distributed. For a card to be good in terms of stat line, you generally want to focus on one stat and then have the other two stats be lower as a result. A lot of the A tier cards will have high appeal values, since you'll want cards that have high appeal values to get a high score. Katori doesn't have that high of an appeal value, but she is voltage typing. That's why she's in B tier. Pretty much any card that's voltage typing by default B and B tier. Voltage typing is probably one of the most useful ones to have. Her three different skills, voltage gain for the ability, passive appeal gain for all members of your team, and then active personality is an increase to the appeal stat when you use your SP skill. All very good to have. Lokatori is probably one of the top contenders for the B tier. Next off is Umi, and Umi definitely deserves an A tier, and I'm not being biased, I'm just looking at the map. I'm also going to try to put the cards into the relative placements in that particular tier. So Umi would be in front of Ellie. Let's take a look at Umi. And the first thing you might notice is this very high appeal stat, 6,663. This is a very high value. And it's the second highest value for UR cards out of the 18 that are released initially. Umi is also SP typing. SP typing is pretty good. It's not as good as voltage typing for getting consistent scores. But SP typing is also very good due to SP gauge gain. Through SP gauge gains, you can also activate your SP skill faster, thus getting more score that way. Her skills, SP gauge gain. The passive personality is an increase in technique, and honestly, I value technique passive boosting the least because it's only relevant if you're trying to get a higher SP raw value. You would much rather try to increase the appeal through your passive skills, and that would be a much more reliable way to get a high score. The active personality skill is also very good. It's based on switching your units, and there's a chance that you'll increase SP gauge gain when you do that. So for all these reasons, Umi is an A tier, mainly just because of the very high appeal stat and the SP typing not being a bad thing. Next off is Rin, and unfortunately for Rin, she'll be joining Honoka in C tier. Let's take a quick look at Rin to see why that is. Rin's stats aren't too good. Distributed evenly, which again isn't that good, you would much rather invest a lot more points into appeal and then have like lower stats for the stamina and technique. Her ability is a skill activation rate up, which isn't good. Like any time I see skill activation rate up based abilities, you have to consider the fact that these abilities and skills don't do anything. They just make it more likely that other things do things, if that makes sense. So you would much rather have a card that does something on its own than have a card hope that another card will do something more likely. The passive personality is a increase in technique, which again we've mentioned isn't that good. And then the active personality is SP gauge gain. Really the only reason why Ren made it into C tier is because she's an SP type with an okay active personality skill. Aside from those things, she would pretty much be D tier. So now we have Maki, and Maki is the best card in A tier, and let's go over the reasons why. First thing to note is that she has the highest appeal value out of all the UR cards initially released. It can reach up to 7113 without limit break. Of course, this does come at the trade-off of having very low stamina. If you're going for a high score, you just want to maximize the appeal stat as much as possible. Maki has the highest raw value, and her skills also increase appeal in some shape or form. Her ability is an appeal boost, and her passive person 
personality skill is also an appeal boost, although it has to be a attribute matching in order for a card to get the benefit. That means at the very least, Maki will get the own benefit of her skill. Whether or not other cards on your team will get that benefit is based on whether they're a cool attribute or not. Active personality skill isn't too good because it's a skill activation rate up. Aside from that, she's pretty much a powerhouse in terms of getting high scores. The two bad things about Maki is again the active personality skill that only increases the skill activation rate and the fact that she's skill typing. Skill typing is the worst out of all four types. They offer a 5% increase in skill activation rates but lower your voltage gains by 5%. Whenever you're lowering your voltage gains, it's never a good thing. The fact that Maki has such a high appeal stat, it kind of outweighs that negative, which is why she's the top of A tier. The only time a skill typing card is good is if they do something so amazing that you don't care that it's going to take a 5% penalty to your voltage gains. So keep that in mind for when we reach near the end and talk about why a particular skill type card is S tier. Speaking of skill type cards that aren't good, Nozomi unfortunately reaches the bottom here at D tier. Aside from the art looking fantastic, Nozomi doesn't really provide too much. Her stat line here, her highest is in stamina. I guess you could use her as like a stat stick for having high stamina, but all her other skills and abilities don't really offer much. Ability here increases skill activation rate up, which again is bad. The personality passive is a technique boost, which is also bad. And the active personality here is a skill activation rate up boosts. Pretty much everything about this card is not good in terms of team building. Only go for Nozomi if you're like a huge Nozomi fan. So now we have Hanayo and Hanayo is a solid B tier card. Let's take a look at what she brings to a team. Her stat line is rather distributed so that's not really the main focus. Her ability here grants a shield and shield is a good defensive ability to have. Her passive personality is also a stamina boost and the active personality is kind of where it gets awkward and why Haneo's in B tier. The active personality skill increases the SP bar by 10% of her own appeal stat and this is kind of anti-synergistic because the reason you would run Haneo is for her defensive benefits whereas she also has a skill that increases the SP bar which doesn't really fit into the theme of being a defensive card so it's kind of awkward. Aside from that she's a pretty good guard type card but the A tier guard type cards are just much better. Nico is next. I would honestly put Nico kind of a 50-50 whether Nico or Katori is better or who deserves to be the top of B tier. But my personal opinion, I would put Nico on the top. Taking a look at Nico, she shares a lot of similarities to Katori that we looked at earlier. She does have a higher stamina stat instead of a technique stat, but the three different skills that she provides is probably the reason why I would put her above Katori. The ability is a voltage boost, and the passive personality is an appeal stats boost. So these again are both good for trying to get a high score. And now the active personality skill is where it gets interesting. It provides a appeal boost and it'll linger for the remainder of the song. If you can activate this very early on into a song, then you'll have a lot of benefits. You'll get the 5% boost for the entire song, pretty much. If a song doesn't have too many appeal chances or they happen near the middle of the song, then Katori would probably be better since her skill isn't reliant on appeal chances, it's reliant on using the SP skill, and that's more consistent. Overall though, I would rank Nico higher than Katori, but they're more or less equivalent in terms of what they do. So now moving on to Aqua, we have Chika and unfortunately for Chika, she joins Nozomi in the D tier. Taking a look at Chika here, she does have the highest stamina value out of all the other cards. So she would make a really good stat stick. For that reason, I would probably put Chika above Nozomi, but competing for the top spot in D tier isn't really something to be proud about. Her ability is a skill activation rate up, which is bad. Her passive personality is a stamina increase, which is actually good. And then her active personality is damage reduction. As we talked about with Honoka, damage reduction is not that good. You would much rather have shielding or healing type of abilities. That's kind of why Honoka is about Chika even though they kind of fulfill similar roles. Also, Honoka is guard typing instead of skill typing. Skill typing cards will most certainly be very low tier, again, unless they do something very amazing that will overcome that kind of penalty, such as Maki and one of the cards coming up soon. So now we have Riko. And Riko is a special case of S tier. I'll have to explain what exactly makes Riko S tier. And that goes back to my criteria of S tier cards doing something either the best at what they do or doing something unique. And for Riko, she definitely does something unique. Riko has a rather average stat line, but that's not the reason why she's here. Her ability is damage reduction, which isn't good again. Passive personality 
is an increase in stamina, which is nice. But the active personality skill is what we're going to be looking at. She has a very unique active personality skill, which can actually remove the negative multipliers that are applied to a song. A lot of high difficulty tier songs, they have penalties for not matching attributes. For example, if you play like a hard song, you might have a 20% reduction in your appeal stat unless you match the attribute of the song. With this personality skill, you can actually negate that negative and then just pretend like it doesn't exist. So you can pretty much build one team for all six attributes and not care that you're not matching attributes. Since with Rico's skill, you can just negate that entirely. For that reason, Rico deserves S tier for new players. If you were to ignore that, it would fall pretty fast to C tier. But because a lot of people will be overwhelmed by team building, you don't want to build a unique team for every song or every different attribute of song, then having Rico would make your life a lot easier. Now the problem with Rico again is she's kind of like a noob friendly card. Once you progress later into the game and you make specific teams, get better cards, she's not going to be too useful. And a lot of the later songs will actually have penalties that are related to reducing your base stats. And that's something that Rico's skill can't fix. It's up to you to decide whether Rico deserves S tier or C tier. For me, since a lot of people will be new, I would put Rico in S tier. But there's another card that you can easily get that also has the same skill as Rico, which I'll talk about at the end. Rico isn't a priority to get, but if you get her during your rerolling, as well as something else that's good, then maybe it's an account worth keeping. So next off, we have the actual queen of S tier, Kanan. She's pretty much the best card that you'll have access to at the beginning of the game. And to this date, it's still a very powerful card. Let's take a quick look at Queen Kanan. She has a very high appeal stat, 6663, the second highest aside from Maki. And all three of her abilities and personality skills have something to do with increasing your point gain. Her ability increases the appeal stats of cards in the same unit. Her passive personality increases the appeal stats of all your members, nine cards in total, and her active personality increases the appeal stats of all your members for the remainder of the live. It's another one of those lingering abilities that we talked about earlier. That was what made Nico better than Katori. Everything Kanan does is related to getting a high score. She's the best card to try to get a high score. If you don't have Kanan, don't expect to get a high score compared to a lot of other people that might have that card. Next off is Daya. Daya gets a solid A tier placement. I would put her less valuable than Umi, but more valuable than Ellie. Daya's that line here is very similar to Kanan's. Its ability is a voltage boost on SP skill. It's a very unique ability that has very niche uses. You would much rather increase your appeal stat rather than try to boost the power of your SP skill. Her passive personality skill is an increase in technique, not very good, but the active personality skill is pretty good. It's the same as Kanan's one, where it'll increase the appeal stat of all your members by 5% for the remainder of the live show if it activates during the appeal chance completion. So the difference between Kanan and Daya is pretty big. Even though they have the same stat line and kind of do very similar things, the voltage and skill typing difference is a huge factor, as well as the difference in their passive personality skill. Despite that, Daya I still deserves A tier since he's a lot better than most other cards in terms of trying to gain score. Now we have Yo, and Yo is another solid defensive card in A tier. I would put Yo above Ellie for the sole reason that she has a useful active personality skill. If you recall, Ellie's active personality skill was a very gimmicky revive, but Yo's personality skill actually restores stamina based on taking damage. So that can be very useful for keeping your HP in the green. The trade-off here is that Yo has very low HP values, but she also has very high appeal value for being a guard card, as well as a high technique value. That makes her an offensive defense card, just like Ellie. Her other abilities also focus on increasing your stamina or recovering your stamina. Overall, a very powerful card. So now we have Yoshiko, and Yoshiko is probably in B tier. Quick look at Yoshiko, you can see that her stats are very similar to Yo's stats that we just looked at. Being SP typing means that you don't take any kind of negative or you don't get any kind of positive for your voltage gains, but you do get bonuses to your SP gauge gains, which can be useful, especially since her ability and her active personality skill also increases SP gauge gain. The passive personality skill is an increase into your technique, and that's always kind of like a throwaway. Every time you see this, it's just kind of ugh, wish it was something else. So next off, we have Hanamaru, and Hanamaru is very unique. It's not unique enough to be an S tier, but it's still pretty unique. 
So I would put her in B tier, somewhere around the middle. So what Hanamaru does is focus entirely on technique. She has the highest technique value out of all the cards in the game at launch. Her ability increases the amount of voltage you'll gain for using your SP skill. Her passive personality skill increases your technique for all your members. And the active personality skill increases the SP bar by 10% of her own appeal stat. Hanamaru is the card that you want if you want a SP focused strategy. But since more viable strategies involve having consistent score gains with voltage type cards, I would really only put Hanamaru into B tier. If some kind of SP burst team emerged into the meta, and it was meta to just keep using your SP skill over and over again, then Hanamaru would probably be S tier, but unless that happens, she's just too unreliable, uh, especially since her appeal stat is rather low compared to a lot of the A and S tier cards. So we're almost done here. Now we have Mari. And Mari deserves B tier as well, simply for the fact of being voltage typing. But her stats are also pretty good. Her appeal stat is better than Nico and Katori's, but the whole reason I'm putting Mari lower is because her other three skills aren't as good. Her ability is a voltage boost, her passive personality is an appeal stat gain for attribute matching, and her active personality skill is an increase in skill activation rate. And you can see why that's that's the reason she's worse than Nico and Katori in my books, despite having like the 400 more appeal stat. The useless skill activation rate up for the active personality skill just doesn't make her any better. So finally we have Ruby, and Ruby is the only other card that deserves a spot on S tier if we're gonna ignore Riku and put her in like C tier. So Ruby is another offensive defense card, but she is also unique in the case that she has a passive and active personality skill that boosts the appeal stats of your cards. So that makes her better than Yo and Ellie, which don't have these beneficial skills. Ruby's ability grants a shield, which is a pretty substantial amount since Ruby also invests most of her stat line into having a high HP value. So at skill level 1, it would grant 20% of Ruby's stamina. Say she had like this value, 6,663, 20% of that would be around 1,200. And since Ruby has a chance of activating every three notes, she could always just keep activating, keep buffing up her shield, and then her shield would just be impenetrable. Now granted, there are other shield-based cards that can do that, but those other shield cards are defensive focused only, whereas Ruby has offensive capabilities due to her personality skills boosting the appeal stats of all your members. Kind of why Ruby is in S tier. He's the only card here that can both protect your team from taking any damage as well as boosting your team to get more score. So that's pretty much it for the tier list. You'll want to focus on getting S tier and A tier cards. Highly recommend getting Kanan. Ideally you want to get Kanan and Ruby because Kanan and Ruby can pretty much carry you through the entire game and you'll never have to worry about anything. If you have Kanan, Ruby, and Rico, like if you had all three of these, you could just build one team with where one of the units is Kanon, Ruby, and Rico, and then just play the game and get an escort for everything. Uh, well, mostly everything until the new wave of songs come out. For me personally, I'm going to be trying to get a double UR account with Kanon and Ruby and then see where I'm going to go with there. And the one last thing I do want to show off is the SR tier list, which again doesn't matter too much because they're SR cards and the power level difference compared to UR cards is very substantial. Pretty much what I'm telling you is pick Nico for the initial free SR and you'll thank me later. The whole reason you want to pick Nico is because she shares the same ability as Rico but is on a different activation type of requirement. You have to use your SP skill. So that means that until you use your SP skill and you're gonna have to play the song with the debuff supplied normally and then once you use your SP skill there's a 50% chance that you can cleanse them. Since Rico's ability is much easier to activate in comparison to Nico's, that's what makes Rico a better choice for this cleanse type of strategy. But Nico is like a poverty version of Rico. Even if you don't reroll for Rico, you can always get the free Nico and do the same thing. And the rest of these cards, I just kind of arrange them based on their stat line. So if it's A tier, that means they have the best stat line in one way or another of, out of all the SR cards that you have a choice from. High stamina, highest technique, or highest voltage. And then B, C, and D is just how good their stats are compared to the other ones. Don't worry too much about this. Focus on the fact that Nico can do the same thing as Rico, and I would advise picking her. That's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it, learned something. I wish you luck in the re-rolling endeavors, and you're also free to visit my stream twitch.tv slash umida. Once All Stars comes out, I'll probably be streaming every weekday night, re-rolling until I get what I want. Free to drop by and maybe ask me questions about the game or ask other people in the chat if they want to trade accounts. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time.